Oh, power. The power! Welcome to That's Good Sports. I'm your host, Brandon. I think I have officially made it Perna. Today, I will give you those delicious XFL power rankings. But the reason I think I made it is because Mike Mex to the rescue on Instagram posted a video of himself watching my show while smoking a uh, bowl of cereal. To have cosplay sex with a girl dressed as a dinosaur <laughs> who may or may not be alive. <laughs> And I have never seen somebody watch and react to my show before. And it made me uncomfortable and hate myself even more. But Mike did reveal... my One of my ex, ex like, like my first serious girlfriend, she moved to Cincinnati with my ex-best friend. <laughs> Which sounds terrible, Mike. Luckily, there are no XFL teams in Cincinnati. Nelson Spruce is injured, and there's some big Quentin Flowers news happening down in Tampa. Ooh, ooh, that's good sports. Please, for continued XFL, NFL, just football coverage, subscribe to this YouTube channel. I am all over it. Today's episode, though, is sponsored by Audible. Audible is the only app I use to download and listen to audiobooks. And no matter what device I listen to Audible with, it always keeps my place. The best books I've read this year are Scrublands, and right now I'm learning, yes, learning about history while I listen to Empire of the Summer Moon. It's about the rise and fall of the Comanches, and it's truly fascinating. When you download an audiobook through Audible, the books are yours, and you own them forever, and you can listen to them anywhere where offline once downloaded. With your Audible membership, you get a credit every month to download a new title and a selection of two Audible originals to download. If you don't use your monthly credit, it rolls over to the next month. So visit audible.com slash that's good sports or text that's good sports to 500 500. Again, that's audible.com slash that's good sports to start tickling your ears with other people's words. Everyone's talking about the XFL TV ratings plummeting. Well, they're down a little bit, okay? We're in week three. But in comparison to other sports right now, the XFL is still the highest rated sporting event on TV. The XFL topped the NBA, PGA, NCAA, and of course, soccer. Dallas and Seattle had 2 million viewers and Houston at Tampa Bay nearly 2 million. They had about 200,000 more viewers than the NBA's best Milwaukee Bucks versus 76ers. Those are two playoff teams, by the way. To put it in perspective, from week two, the numbers the XFL is getting are about two to three times the viewers as the AAF was in their second week. Not to mention 30,000 fans in St. Louis showed up to watch the Battle Hawks home opener. The bottom line is people are watching, and yes, week one numbers will probably remain the highest, especially once March Madness begins, but if the XFL playoff numbers surpass the week one numbers, that's a great sign for the league. What we do not know is how much revenue the XFL is bringing in, but if the TV numbers remain strong, I'd assume a strong TV rights package will keep the XFL alive. Now, this weekend, we have the Wildcats at the Guardians, LA is favored by seven, the Dragons at the Battle Hawks, and St. Louis is favored by 12, which is the biggest uh, differential of the week. The Roughnecks, just one point favorites on the long road trip to Dallas, and the Defenders are favored by one in Tampa. I think the defenders bounce back in a big way and give me LA covering the seven points. That's not specific gambling advice, it's just what I think. On to the power rankings. Coming in at number eight, New York Guardians. Oh man, this team is anemic. They are worse than the Vipers, I promise you that. The thing the worst two teams have in common is that they have each inserted at least three different quarterbacks this season, and the Guardians managed to get three onto the field in last week's game alone. Of all the quarterbacks to start two games, Matt McGloin is ranked dead last in yards, completion percentage, and passer rating. Cardale Jones is now the league's interception leader after his four-pick performance against the Wildcats. 
I'm guessing we will see Luis Perez or Marquise Williams start this weekend for the Guardians, and probably both, as New York mimics everything bad about the Vipers. The only reason the Guardians have a win is because they played the Vipers, but right now, New York is the lowest scoring team in the XFL with just 32 points on the season. 23 of those points came week one when they played Tampa Bay, and they are the only team to have been shut out so far. They don't have a single offensive player ranked in the top five for passing, rushing, or receiving in terms of yards. The Guardians truly are the worst. Number seven is the Tampa Bay Vipers, who actually have two running backs, top five, in Davion Smith and Jacquees Patrick in yards, and even receiver Dan Williams snuck in at number four. So why are the Vipers number seven? Well, because I actually watch the fucking games, and they are playing better football than New York right now. The Vipers finally scored their first offensive touchdown in week three, a huge leap forward for a team that has no direction. Their quarterbacks have combined for one passing touchdown and three interceptions this season, but both Quentin Flowers and Taylor Cornelius rushed for touchdowns last weekend. But here's the big news. Quarterback Quentin Flowers is taking a leave of absence, which is different than the leave of abstinence I tried and failed to take in high school. I succeeded at abstinence. The Vipers hope to get Flowers back, and the reason he left wasn't made clear, but we all know. We all fucking know. It's his idiot coach, Mark Tressman, who calls the game with all the foresight of an actual Viper. Which are basically blind animals that use their tongues to help them see. Which makes about as much sense as Mark Tressman's QB depth chart. Yes, I went with the snake joke over a guy wearing glasses not having foresight reference. Now these back-to-back -back tweets are very telling. From the XFL, Quentin Flowers is taking over the game. And then a quote from Roughnecks head coach June Jones stating, he was surprised Tressman didn't put Flowers back in the game because, you know, he was taking over the damn game. The Vipers are my favorite team in my heart, but my hate for Mark Tressman is approaching Patriots territory. The Vipers are like my sister, and Tressman is the shitty alcoholic husband they married who I'm patiently waiting to see disappear around mysterious circumstances. And if you're looking for XFL highlights immediately following the games, check out Highlight Heaven's YouTube channel. I don't think anybody gets it up faster than him. Ain't that right, Highlight Heaven? Number six, we've got the Seattle Dragons. To me, the Dragons feel like a team on the verge. They've been competitive every week and lost two games after playing much worse in the second half. They have a quarterback problem with Brandon Silvers. He's not the worst QB in the league, but it doesn't look like he can carry the team, ever. He's thrown a pick in every game and is averaging a 53 completion percentage. I'd give backup quarterback BJ Daniels the start this weekend against the Battle Hawks on Leap Day. No BJ on Leap Day is technically a, a, a sin. The league's tackling leader is Dragons linebacker Steven Johnson, a former Denver Bronco. Johnson might be one of the best defensive players in the XFL right now, which is unfortunate he's going unnoticed up in Seattle. But if they can start scoring points on offense, the Dragons defense is competitive enough to win them uh, a streak of games. I think. Number five, Dallas Renegades. In the recap episode, I mentioned you should keep an eye on Renegades tight end Donald Farham. What I didn't realize is that he can run at speeds of 21.1 miles per hour. He stated on Twitter he can actually hit 23 miles per hour, which would make him about as fast as Tyreek Hill. What I can say is that a six foot eight human being running over 21 miles per hour has to be one of the most terrifying things I can imagine. Yes, even more terrifying than Tyreek Hill off the field. If I'm Landry Jones, my first target every single play until I die is Donald Farham. Cameron Artis Payne running back is averaging uh, more yards per carry than any other back in the league with 6.4. A win Sunday against the Roughnecks could really shake up these power rankings. Dallas moves the ball better than any team, including Houston with 361.7 yards per game. Houston is surprisingly ranked fourth in yards per game, but are clearly better at, you know, scoring touchdowns and winning. 
Number four is the DC Defenders. Yeah, big drop for DC. They look like they might be the best team in the XFL after two weeks before getting beaten soundly by LA last Sunday. And by soundly, I mean it sounded like they got their asses kicked. The defenders have the best run-stopping defense in the league right now, giving up just 74.7 rush yards per affair, but need more from their own running backs and Pumphrey and Presley, America's favorite folk duo. I'll hold off on judging DC until they get a chance to redeem themselves this weekend. Number three, we've got the LA Wildcats. Wow, wow, we baby. Why would I jump a losing team all the way to spot number three ahead of the team I just said was number one a week ago? Am I crazy? Well, you should know by now that I fucking am. And it's about coming together. The main reason though is Josh Johnson, quarterback. The second main reason is Winston Moss, head coach. And the third main reason is their defense. This team is on the rise and they play the Guardians this weekend, which makes me feel good moving them all the way up to number three. During week two, even though they lost, their defense played well against Landry Jones and the Renegades. Again, the difference in that game was the Elijah Hood fumbles and he got zero carries against DC and Martez Carter went off in his place. But Carter is now nursing an ankle injury, so we'll see how that plays out. But Josh Johnson, I thought he would be the best quarterback in the league before the season started. And while PJ Walker is not giving up that title anytime soon, Johnson is now the second best ball thrower in the XFL, and the Wildcats now have scored the second most points in the XFL. Johnson finished week three with 148 QB rating, highest of any QB this season, three touchdowns and zero picks. Wide receiver Trey McBride looks like he was well worth the wait. McBride and Nelson Spruce could emerge as the best duo in the league, but with Nelson Spruce's injury, watch tight ends Brandon Barnes and Jordan Smallwood to see an uptick in their production against the Guardians this weekend. The team's leading receiver, Nelson Spruce, is out this week as he deals with a serious case of pine beetle. All kidding aside, because we all know how funny injuries are, the only reason Spruce isn't in the NFL right now is because of injuries, so I hope this isn't serious. Corner, Mike Stevens is the only defensive player in the league with multiple picks, and my guess is that many Wildcat defenders jump to the top of the stat leaders after they eviscerate the shitty Guardian Saturday. Coming in at number two, we've got the St. Louis Battlehawks. Steadily, quietly, running back Matt Jones has become the league's rushing leader with 224 yards at a 4.3 yard per carry average. He had a big run early last week and with 52 attempts has been given more chances to run than any other back. I'm a bit surprised we haven't had a 100 yard rusher yet. Uh, Jones has come close twice with 95 and 85 yard games and I do think he has a chance to cross 100 this weekend against the Dragons, even though they're only giving up about 104 rushing yards per game, which is currently fourth best. The worst team against the run, you guessed it, it's the Guardians, allowing 138 rushing yards per game. Now the Battlehawks secondary is stout, but lacks Ballhawks, which is disappointing that I can't use Ballhawks and Battlehawks for redundancy purposes like I have been doing with the Defenders Defenders. Safety Will Hill has been balling and hawking. He and Kenny Robinson have the lone picks on the team. Hill and fellow safety Dexter McCoyle are the team's uh, tackling leaders with 19 and 20 on the season. In fact, six of the top 10 tackling leaders in the league are actually safeties. This weekend, I expect a big game for quarterback Jordan Tayamu facing a Dragon secondary that gives up the second most passing yards per game. And I do realize I've said contradictory things about the Dragons defense now. Coming in number one, it's the Houston Roughnecks. Oh yeah, it did take me three weeks to put the Roughnecks at number one. They do have the best offense in the XFL, led by the only quarterback to post a QB rating over 100 every single week. Yes, their defense still gives up too many points, and uh, don't forget the Vipers nearly beat them. My concern was that the offense would stall at some point, and that's why the defenders got the number one spots week one and two. I will say the Roughnecks defense is opportunistic. They came pretty damn close to returning two picks for touchdowns and have multiple players with two sacks. 
That does not sound impressive, but there are only four players with two sacks right now. Wesley Sutton of the Guardians, and I'm pretty sure that was a week one fluke. Andrew Ankara of St. Louis. Then you have the Roughnecks, Carl Bradford and Latroy Lewis. So Houston is literally the only team to have four combined sacks between two players. And my bet is one of those guys separates himself this weekend and emerges as the XFL sack leader. What could turn Houston into a truly complete team is running back James Butler, now averaging 5.7 yards per carry. He had 72 yards last week on seven carries, and if teams decide to actually double cover receiver Cam Phillips at some point, he's going to need to move the chains on the ground. Receiver Cam Phillips, with his two tutties and 194 receiving yards, won his second straight Star of the Week award, putting him just a few stars shy of earning the nickname, The Constellation. The Constellation, fuck, that is good. That's good nickname. Oh, please subscribe here on YouTube. Thank you for watching this stupid ass show. But your XFL support has been amazing. I am truly, truly grateful for all of you guys watching this bullshit every week. Uh, I'm on Twitter, Instagram, at Brandon Perna. If you wanna follow me there, you can do it.